So let's start at the beginning. Roselle, share with everyone like what your dating life was like when we met, like before, what your his like what your love life was like. Oh, so my dating life. <laughs> um, every guy that I met was ugh, they were just like so they were so like inconsistent, you know. I just I could not, I, I thought something was wrong with me because I was like, what's wrong? Why am I attracting these people, you know? Um, so my dating life was so horrible. Yeah. <laughs> horrible. Yeah. That I could not find someone that was on the same page with me or I, it was just, I never had that, like that, um, how do you say, I, well, I was never secure with them. It was always like, I felt like something was going to happen, you know? Right. So, that, and that's what it was like and it's awful it feels terrible doesn't it yeah horrible horrible feeling and you're you're divorced too and your marriage was also like pretty yeah my marriage was very toxic you know um we were married for 23 years and I'm divorced now eight years okay. but um you know, we had good times, but he was also like very uh, verbally abusive. So yeah, it was a co- toxic set at one time. It was like, okay, I have to be in this marriage because I have to be, you know, but yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> right. So you stayed really for the kids, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you were, when you came to me, um, really, how were you feeling? Like, what were you thinking about men and love and you know. Oh, so I was like, I was a, really at my down point because I just did not want to be alone anymore. I'm not made to be alone. There's a lot of women that love to be alone, but not me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and when I came to you, it was just like, I just couldn't take it anymore. And I thought something was wrong with me. And, uh, you know, I felt like, why am I attracting all these men? Why can't I find someone? I see so many people so happy and they, I, and I'm like, what's wrong with me? Why am I so different? You know? So yeah, I was really depressed. I wasn't really in my low point. Yeah. Yeah. Many people feel that way. I remember feeling that way myself. And then we met and I don't even remember, how do we find each other? I, I don't know. I just clicked the button on Facebook (laughs) and here you are. (laughs) Right. So it's very spiritual how we came together. And very often we find ourselves in patterns and it goes back to childhood, things that are unresolved. So then you came to me, we started working together. And what was like, uh, obviously, there was a lot that we did. But what was the big, there were a couple of big turning points for you. Do you remember um, what what stuck out for you about like what you learned and about what uh, your big breakthroughs? Right. So when we did Bye Bye Blind Spots, because we did that first. And um, what stood out to me was that you uh, let me see that it wasn't there was nothing wrong with me. (laughs) It was just the way I felt about myself and my childhood and the abandonment issues that I had. And and I was attracting men that were doing that same exact thing to me. So you helped me uh, see how, um, like, you know, I deserve, you know, I have to believe in that. And I, and I had to change my whole way of thinking. So, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's right. We have to change our way of thinking, but do you notice how maybe before you were thinking at some level, well, maybe I do deserve. And then you go kind of back and forth. I deserve, I don't deserve. Is there something wrong with me? (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. So like, I, I kind of believe, like, I would say to myself, yeah, I deserve better. But did I believe it? Maybe I didn't because I was just, (laughs) I was just attracting the same type of men, but different faces. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. And that's why it's like Groundhog Day. It's like, I'm a good person. I'm a loving person. Why do I keep attracting this kind of person? So there's obviously more under the surface that needs to be handled. Mm-hmm. And you did. You handled it. Yes. Yeah. So, and what did you notice too that was different once you had the breakthrough and we created your vision? Then you started dating. What did you like the most about the dating process in this new way? Oh, yeah. So I... Um... I was watching myself like, like it's almost like an out of body experience. <laughs> it 
it was so weird. Like, I, and I was noticing so many things about myself, like, you know, like, why am I feeling this way? And, you know, I've dated, um, like, with several guys and, you know, even dating them, I still felt insecure. And I was like, why am I feeling like this, you know? And, yeah, I that's what I've noticed about myself. Like, I would see myself and try to correct that. You know, so yeah, I had to do a lot of parenting, <laughs> a lot of parenting. Right. So we, so for those of you who are watching, we have a process called empowered dating and we do that in dating camp. And I call it dating camp because it's fun because you're in the driver's seat of your dating. And what was different about the kinds of men that you were dating as an empowered dater versus like before? So, yeah. So uh, the kind of men that were coming that I was, they, some of them were still, you know, like, still like wishy-washy. <laughs> That's what I call it. Um, right. And right away, like I would just read them out like, okay, you're not it. You're not it. You know, so even to the point where I was dating someone for like, as you know, I was dating someone for four months. And even with that, I, he, I knew there was something not going right with this. And I just kept, you know, saying to myself, maybe, maybe he's, he'll change. But then I was thinking about my empowering statement saying, don't, we don't date or marry potential. So I'm like, why am I doing this? <laughs> so, yeah. And it, it did hurt um, when, when I stopped talking to him, but it didn't, I didn't feel bad about it. That it's, so that was the difference because my old me would probably be crying and get all depressed, but I, I didn't. So that I was proud of myself. Right, that's that. very empowering. And the other thing I'm hearing is that you didn't waste a lot of time. I know in the old days, I would have moved in with the guy, right? I'll change him. I'll fix him. It'll work itself out. But at the end, what was interesting about this is that he was definitely a good person. He was really but he did have things that were unresolved in his life, mm -hmm. right? That were kind yes. of, right. But, but he was a, a quality person. Now let's fast forward. So we learned how to create a pipeline. We never date or marry potential. We're doing the inviting. We're doing the creating. We understand who we really are. And then, <laughs> then you met Randy, right? Yes. Yeah, so it was. So one night I was like, oh, this is ridiculous because I'm only on one with on one dating site. That's all I was restricted to. I'm like, this is ridiculous. These are the same guys that were on here six months ago. <laughs> so I'm like, there's got to be somebody out there. So I took my time and I I was reading everyone's um, profile. And so Rosella, because of her religion, she's on one particular website. Right. Right. Okay. And then what happened? So, yeah. yeah. So on this one particular website, the dating site, there was the same guys were on there for like the past six months. Yeah. And I'm like, this is really ridiculous. I'm like, I can't, uh, I don't see anybody here. So I, so it was one, one night, or actually one morning, it was one o'clock in the morning. I couldn't sleep. So I'm just going through my profile and I came across Randy's profile. He had no picture up. And he was dating someone for four months and he had hidden his profile. But that night he, he re-put it. He re-put his profile because things weren't, he's like, there was no, no spark with this girl. So right. he put it on and I happened to see it. So I read it and I just, I, I set my thing. Like, you know, I enjoy reading your profile, check mine out. And if, you know, you like it, we can, get in touch right. he got in touch with me right then and there this is like one <laughs> o'clock in the morning <laughs> so he got in touch with me right then and there and uh he um he put his picture because he had no pictures up and I didn't I didn't put my pictures up because it was just right after it happened with the other guy so I right. was still like kind of like I don't know what to do you know right um right. so he put his picture up and I was like oh so I put my picture up so he thought that this was all computerized. He thought it was. 
he thought it was something with the dating site, you know, wanting him <laughs> to stay on. <laughs> so, so then we started talking and um, he told me that his sister lives in New York. So we just hit it off at one o'clock in the morning. So every night when we talk, we try to stay on from one o'clock in the morning to say happy <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> Uh, yeah so and then you know one thing that stood out with him was that um he his profile he, he seemed so kind you know I'm like wow yeah. this is the kind of person I, I really would like you know was I attracted to him the like the very first time no I said maybe I was like but I have to like just you know see who he really is because my thing was my old me was I had I was I had to be attracted like right away, like they had to be like super gorgeous. And, but he, even though he was, he is really, really handsome. Um, I just it wasn't attracted to him right away, but yeah. his personality and the way he was just talking to me, it was just, I was like, wow. I was like, I really want to get to know him more, you know? So. Yes. Aww. So it goes to show that, um, when we're open, our heart is open and we're clear because Rosella had a very clear vision, right? She was able to reach out and see and also get complete from the, the other relationship. So then let's fast forward. So you're talking and you also, so what's the best part? You share religious values, right? Yes. Religion values, all our goals. We're on the same page regarding um, financial stuff and um, yeah. And we just we're on the same page about all, everything you know he has two two children they're younger than you know than my children but you know my old me would be like I don't want to raise anybody's children you know yes yes but now with the new me I'm like you know I have so much love to give why not you know Me so too. and they're amazing kids he has amazing kids and he you know he met my kids and he loves them and you know and he even said to me because my son my 26 year old son still isn't married and he still lives at home and he said to me he goes if he ever needs a place to stay he's always welcome here mm -hmm. so so I'll be moving to Tennessee yeah. <laughs> a New Yorker moves to Tennessee there you go <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, and everything is falling into place with our engagement. I mean, everything. I mean, it, it, we just got engaged and we, we got almost all the major stuff done. Yes. And everything was open to us. Like mm -hmm. everything opened up to us. The right. venue, the music, the photographer, everything. They're all free that day. <laughs> That's amazing. So what's the, when's the big day? July 3rd. July 3rd. Oh, and is it going to be in New York or Tennessee? It's going to be in New York. So my thing was because I love the beach and I wanted a, a destination wedding. Yeah. But then he said to me, he goes, your family is from New York. He goes, no one's going to be able, not everyone's going to be able to come. He goes, let's, let's look around here. So from Tennessee, he started looking at state parks oh. the, and we found a beautiful um beach uh it's like a, a state park on the beach but it has a beautiful catering place Aww. indoors so we will, will we will be getting married on the beach oh how beautiful yeah so he goes so he's he just he made everything happen in fact, yeah. that's what that was my vision my vision board was to get married on the beach um and to have a wedding on the beach and this is exactly what i'm having oh and how do you feel? What's really special about how you feel when you're with him? Because you spent a quite a, a lot of time with him. Yeah. How do you yeah. feel? Here? Oh, my gosh. I feel not that I wasn't whole before. Yeah, yeah. But I feel I feel whole. Like for the first time in my life, I don't feel like something is missing. Or, you know, when you get that that horrible feeling inside your gut and you can't pinpoint what it is, I have not that I don't have that feeling whatsoever. I, right. I just feel so secure with him. Like he just makes me feel so loved. And so uh, he will do it. He'll like, even when we talk to the people, like the photographer or the DJ guy, he goes, talk to Rosella. Cause whatever she wants, I want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so, so yeah. He's just so loving. So mm -hmm. loving. 
And it's sort he's of so like, funny. He's so funny. He just makes me laugh all the time. You know. Um, and what are some of the things that you're most excited about for the future being together? Okay. So with his line of work, he owns his own trucking business. So he, he doesn't work so many hours. So that's great. He yeah. doesn't need to work so many hours. And he told me, he says, and you don't need to work if you don't want to, but if you want to, uh, yeah, you can work. And, you know, <laughs> so he, um, yeah, so with his line of work, we're able to travel a lot and we're able to go back and forth. Like, well, I'm not selling my house here. So we're going to come back and forth, go to Tennessee, come back. Because my kids are here in New York. Yes. So, yeah, so he's going to help me out with all that stuff. And we have like, so we have spiritual goals, like to help other people learn about spiritual things and stuff like that. So, yeah, we have all those goals in mind and lined oh. up. And that's what empowered dating really is, is that you're having these meaningful conversations and the dating actually is the beginning of that relationship. Like we mm -hmm. don't do anything back. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yesterday I went dress shopping. I found yeah. a beautiful wedding gown oh. and it's like, it's like a beachy wedding gown, you know, <laughs> and uh, the girls, I have five girls in my bridal party. Oh. So it's my daughter. She's going to be my maid of honor. My sons are going to walk me down the aisle. Oh, yeah. And um, it's so it's my daughter, my daughter-in-law, uh, his daughter, my sister and his sister. So it's like really all like tight family thing, you oh. know, it's, it's going to, it's so amazing. It's so beautiful. I got all emotional today. Just thinking that my kids are going to be all part of this. Oh, that is so wonderful. Well, that's what it was about. Your vision was for family. Mm -hmm. It really was. And I just want everyone to know that when your emotional needs are met, you always just feel really great because you can talk with your partner about anything. I'm married almost 18 years and our dating is a reflection of what it's like today. It's very, it's really very, very sweet. Yeah, and that's the thing. We talk about everything. One time we were on FaceTime for almost five hours. <laughs> right. And five hours. People and, are looking at us like, what do you say in five hours? I'm like, wow, we talk, we touch, we touch every single aspect of our life. <laughs> including family, financial, spiritual, right? We talk about everything from the beginning because Rosella healed herself. She got to wholeness. She had a lot of trauma from her childhood, right? And we grow mm -hmm. up chronologically, but not always emotionally. So now she's able to really know and recognize what she wants, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I'm able to like voice myself. Like if something doesn't sit right with me, you know, before I would just hold it in and, you know, be like a little baby about it and not talk. But now I feel like, oh, you know, and he's okay. He's okay if I say something. So that's what makes me feel good too, because he understands me, you know, he gets me and I get him. So that's, then that's a conscious relationship. One where you can share, not from a place of, ah, you know, mm -hmm. that's why there's yes. such a high divorce rate. And very often, if we don't do the, do the healing work, then we continue attracting wrong people. And then we try and express our needs to them, but they won't meet those needs. So everything has to be aligned. Yes. Stella, I want to acknowledge you because you did the work. Mm -hmm. I did. I did. I did the work. And even though, you know, like with the, the other relationship, it didn't work out, but it, it was like for the best. I just needed to see that to understand what I was missing. That's right. That's right. And the other relationship, he was a good guy. It's just that he couldn't, he couldn't deliver, no. but it wasn't like he was emotionally unavailable. He just had a situation that was kind of unworkable and you didn't waste a lot of time and you were still treated very, mm -hmm. like very well. It was like a good, uh, a good taste, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Russell, I'm so proud of you. Really you did yes. the work. What do you want? And, and Rosella invested in herself. She did, you know, she's, um, she's a hairstylist. She's, she was a single mom. She had a lot of responsibilities, but she got very, very committed to her future so that the next 
10, 20, 30, 40 years that she was positioned to be in a healthy relationship. Mm-hmm. So Rosella, what do you want people to know about investing in themselves and getting help? Right. Cause sometimes people have all these ideas about it. What do you want them to know now that you know, you're here? Well, it is so, so important to invest in yourself because you're the most important person, you know, and yeah. if you don't invest yourself and if you don't do something for yourself, there's, you can't, you can't be there for others anyway, you know? So, um, it just helps you see so such a clear picture of who you really are. So I just, this is the best thing that happened to me. I mean, I prayed, I prayed before you came into the picture, Barry. <laughs> so you were the answer to my prayers, you know? Oh. And, the, and you know what the funny thing is? Everything I had, every, like, I, even last year when we were talking and I knew I wanted to have a beach wedding, I already bought like stuff for my feet, for the beach and everything. And I'm, I'm like, oh, this I bought last year for my beach wedding. <laughs> everything is just coming true when you really believe it. Like I actually really, that's another thing about investing in yourself. You start to really believe that these things are possible. And then when they start happening, you're like, whoa, this is good. <laughs> this is good. That's right. Because you learn how to change your foundation, not like this intellectual, wishful thinking, like so many of us have done by just maybe therapy or, or, or prayer. Rosella prayed and we came together and she had a plan. <laughs> right. Yes. yes. Oh. And I also prayed. Uh, so when I was when that night, that morning that I met uh, Randy, um, I was also praying. And I, I said, you know, I know there's my soulmate is out there. And right. I know he's praying for me too. And guess what? He was praying for, he says, he, he was praying for his soulmate. That's Aww. what he tells me. He goes, you're my soulmate. That's what he tells me. <laughs> he goes, I'm so blessed to have you. It's so true. When things are right, they align. And then we talk about them because soulmates are really goalmates. And when people say to me, oh, I don't believe it, I don't believe it exists, or maybe it exists, but I don't know how to get there, I'm going to gear up to be alone, there is no reason to do that. There's no reason to be alone, but we need to create that clear path to finding your person. And then at the end, you have that, you have a conscious relationship and tools and skills to navigate and expand and grow a healthy relationship instead of creating from your childhood. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So Yay. yeah. So yeah. We're just so excited. So um, you know, there's a lot of planning, but you know what? If we don't feel in no stress about it, <laughs> people are like, "How are you gonna pull it off? You have like six weeks." I'm so like, what? "We're doing it. Everything is just falling on our lap." <laughs> totally. Well, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see pictures and yes, 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 yes. yes. Celebrate with you all the way there. Yeah, well, I am going to try to see if I can get a Zoom on it. So Yay. this way, whoever can make it could watch it on Zoom. Just like this. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, so exactly. I'm going to look into that. Oh, beautiful. Well, Rosella, I know we're all so happy for you and cheering for you that you should have just such a, you know, a blessed life with him. Yes, right? I feel so blessed. I feel so, he's so amazing. I see. So amazing. I see it. And it happened. So congratulations and thank keep us you. Posted on how I will. Goes. Okay. Mwah. I will. Bye, everybody. <laughs> bye. 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 bye.